It's gonna be a warm one today here in London. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna try to find some trees yeah. to hang out underneath. We're gonna see if we can do some paintings in the forest. We've been doing a lot of more kind of vista slash kind of open green sunny grass area. So it'd be cool to try and get some kind of dark shadow yeah. um, interior forest. Yeah, things. exactly. I was thinking about doing this direction, which I was just talking about before, but now this is kind of the same idea, but I kind of like the design of this tree and how it arcs this path that enters into the forest. So what I'm thinking instead is maybe keeping this main big tree kind of more center, having those trees that are in the background um, kind of anchor it on the right, and then everything that kind of hangs over the path on the left and kind of keep this circle somewhat in the center composition and then really just make that glow as if it's just blasting sun outside the forest and this is kind of a little bit of a shaded area of calm and, and serene beauty. So I think if I kind of anchor myself here, this scene should remain somewhat in, intact, I think, for the next hour. All right, I got my palette set up. Um, a lot of this is just leftover paint from yesterday, but my colors are titanium white, starting from the right, titanium white, lemon yellow, uh, cad orange, I think, uh, Indian yellow, that's a little bit dirty right now, uh, transparent brown oxide, which is basically like a burnt sienna, but without the opacity, cad red, uh, king's blue, this is purple lake, and then this one, it was French Ultramarine. I'll have to add a little bit more. Um, ivory Black, and I believe that's Thallow Green. Um, so right now I don't have any Cad Yellow on there. I can make that with the white and the Indian Yellow pretty well. And also, since Indian Yellow is nice and transparent, it has serves a lot of purposes. So I'd rather have that on my palette um, than just kind of grab the Cad Yellow. Um, I've got my palette knife, a little rubber scraper. This was an essential oil bottle that's now um, serves as my um, painting medium, which is Gamblin solvent free medium um, that I just put in there. It's a nice little travel size. So that's basically my linseed oil in a sense, but with a little bit of fast drying medium with some galcate in it. And then my brushes, um, just an array of brushes, um, some synthetics, one or two bristles, um, which we were, we've talked about this on the way over here. More bristles will be nice outside. So I think I'm going to experiment a little bit more with what I bring on my plein air trips. And then a panel cut up into, uh, I believe they're five by eight um, size dimensions so that later on we can just kind of cut it down the middle and have two boards there. Um, and then of course some turp and two types of beverages. There you go. So what I've done here is I've done just a little bit of pre-mixing. So these are just some of the colors that I'm seeing right now in the composition right when I sat down. So it just took me, I mean, literally two minutes to just kind of look up and say, okay, there's some, there's some of the green from the tree leaves. There's some of the, um, the trunk, the ground, um, some of the warmth that's within all of the bark and all of the wood that's within this forest, some of the dappled light. I'm gonna have to skew these as I move along, but at least I have something mixed up that where I can kind of just add to and get me there quicker 
as um, things change so fast out here, it's nice to have just some kind of pre-made piles that you can just kind of grab and kind of keep mixing so that you can hopefully speed up the painting a little bit and get what you need in there um, as soon as you can. There's a couple sitting here right now that they just came over and sat down, which is actually be perfect right here in this little composition. So, or in this little spot, I'm gonna see if I can fit them in. I'll put them in for now, and then if I have to change it later, I'll do that. But let's just see if we can kind of get just at least where they're sitting. like they're I got them in enough so now if they move I can always add details to them later on um, obviously the color behind them is going to change a little bit but I just needed to kind of um, piece that in to develop their outline and a little bit more of their pose which I'm going to try for maybe a leg out an arm back a shoe here a um, little bit of color, mostly all in shadow, kind of a kind of a thing. So we'll see. We'll see if that sticks around. I might end up taking it all out at the end, but for right now, I like the the story of it, so I'm going to keep it. I can get this nice and bright back here and then maybe add a little bit of light speckles dappled light on the trunk and then up the branches design that a little bit more make sure that this now that it's in the composition make sure that it's actually serving a purpose and your eye wants to go there Even because now I've got a really strong focal point not only is it high contrast but there's but they're people so if those were gone, it's a little bit more balanced, but it's a little bit more just dead center now. So I have to make sure that this is serving a purpose and shouldn't just be cut off in the end. Um, or the other option is removing them all together and just really just making it about the tree and the forest looking out into the, the sunny path coming in. 
So I'm going to see what happens if I kind of kind of push some contrast over here, push a little contrast right here, um, and put some dappled light on the tree. Then I'll see if, if I need to remove them in the end. I think I'm gonna call this one done for now. Um, I got what I wanted in there. My goal was to just really go with just the vibe. Um, why is it so lovely to sit in this cool forest on a hot day? I mean, what is so pretty about it? So I try to just kind of think about those things and try to be really loose with it and go with some of the first colors that I'm seeing rather than over analyzing every little nook and cranny even though you want to because every little section has a variety of just beautiful harmonies that you'd want to hit completely but you kind of have to pick and choose and so I went for the overall vibe and I'm actually I'm, I'm happy with it I was I wanted to kind of stay lighter my instinct is to go really dark especially if I'm dealing with a lot of high contrast like this so I kind of upped my values overall so when I bring it back inside it's not going to be super dark hopefully that's the that's the plan um, I feel like I kind of resolved one of my issues when this couple came and sat down um, obviously that became the focal point which I think is really nice it's now it's a really lovely story which is kind of what I wanted was kind of just set up for that that exact little moment to happen All right, finishing touches, putting the finishing touches on this. It's all about like the subtleties at this point, And I feel like this, this orange, although like it, it happened earlier when the sun was coming through, uh, like there was always really, really neat um, light shapes. But now at this point, I feel like it's sort of pulling away from the painting. So I'm gonna bring in more of this like kind of purple. Let's see if, I, if, it'll, if it'll do it. Mm -hmm. Lizard and crimson, mm -hmm. and that softens it, and it it's makes nice it more and, about this yeah. little like quiet spot in the middle. Exactly. And then I'm gonna put some more little branches, and sort of lead the eye into the spot. Mm -hmm.